Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, tuning in to the next episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last few episodes we've gone ahead and actually implemented the character search page here with some error handling and then as we type in a particular name, not Ricky, uh, Rick instead, we now are hitting a particular API, the Rick and Morty API, and we are paging this response here. So if you missed it, check it out. I'll link a card somewhere. But outside of this, uh, we are approaching production ready, if you will, uh, as in we're getting to a point where we can actually release this and it has some substance to it. Uh, so I do want to talk about Firebase here and introduce it and get it set up inside of our project here. So if we quickly flip over to Google Chrome here or your preferred web browser, you just go ahead and search Firebase Console, and we can go ahead and just land on the Firebase Console page here, and we're just gonna go through, set up a project, and get everything up and running inside of our application. So I'm already signed in in this browser to the account that I have for this channel, and that I do want to create the Firebase project under. So make sure you're signed into the proper account, and then we're just gonna simply create a create new project, and then we're gonna enter the project name. So let's call this, uh, well actually I think I called it Simple Morty, the actual app. And so we're going to go ahead and just call the project name the exact same. We're going to obviously accept the terms in order to continue. And then we will leave all of this stuff enabled here for us, uh, specifically looking at you Crashlytics. It's really going to come in handy as we start to deploy our code to uh, production here. Again, just going to go ahead and accept some terms here. We are in the United States, and then otherwise we will simply click Create Project and let it do its thing. So what is Firebase? Firebase is a pretty sweet suite of tools. I guess that's not really the nicest way to put it, but it's, it's a nice little uh, repository. It's a nice little added feature that you can connect your app up to, and it has a variety of features baked in that you can use to your disposal for the project for whatever reason you need. Um, so you can connect in iOS, Android, and even web applications. Looks like you can also do Unity here if you're into some game design and whatnot. But outside of which client or however many clients you're going to go ahead and add, there are a whole bunch of things you can have here set up. So there's some kind of database here, there's storage, uh, even hosting for particular websites. The real-time database is pretty nifty, it's pretty interesting. You can actually have a whole authentication and everything set up so you can have a, a particular sign-in method and uh, you know, offer a simple way for the user to authenticate in your platform. And you can kind of see this as you know, your one-stop shop for all of your back-end needs if you don't have the capability to build out a legitimate back-end. Uh, otherwise here, there's some performance, there's uh, Crashlytics, which is a huge, huge benefit and uh, the app distribution, which is just another way to kind of deploy your builds internally or to certain people or devices or whatever the case is. There's a whole suite of analytics in here and even different things you can do with engagement around A-B testing, in-app messaging, remote config, uh, and you get all of this for free. So Firebase is honestly a staple, uh, basically, even in production code, even in certain companies, they'll just go ahead and use this because it offers uh, some really great stuff here. So in order to, uh, let's just go back to the project overview and let's go ahead and set up our Android app here. So if we click on the Android app, we're gonna need the package name here that comes with the app. So if we quickly bounce over to uh, our Android Studio, our project, we can see here that this is the package name or this is the um, you know unique identifier for our application. Otherwise we could just give it a nickname here, uh, I don't think we really need one at this point, and also a debug signing cert, which we also don't need, so we're just gonna go ahead and register. And this is gonna go ahead and generate a config file, specifically a JSON file that we're going to be able to download. It tells you right here, Google services.json. It even tells you what to do at this point, but we basically download this file and we place it inside of our app directory. So we can do it in Android Studio if we wanted to. Um, yeah, I guess. So let's just quickly here click show in Finder. Then we're going to just bounce over to Android Studio. And then inside of our app folder here, we're just going to drop this Google services.json into it, let it do its thing. And then we eventually are just going to refactor or basically put in this uh, JSON file here. So now we have it here. We see that it's green. It's a brand new file. There is uh, a whole bunch of information here that you can actually read through and kind of get a sense of what's going on here. Um, you can 
see that there is an Android mobile client here with a particular package name. Uh, there's some OAuth stuff in here. There's particular API keys. And then if you were to add more clients or, or applications to the Firebase project in general, it will grow that uh, JSON file. And then you can see those changes reflected in there. So then otherwise, there's a few things we need to add, specifically the Firebase SDK. So we can quickly just follow the instructions here. We're going to open our project build.gradle. And we're just going to check to make sure certain things are in place here. We were going to change that to Kotlin in a minute, but let's bounce over to Android Studio. Let's open up the build.gradle. Now, not the one that says app here. We need the one that's just period, just at the root directory here. And this is our project level uh, Gradle file. I believe inside of the repositories here, we need to make sure that Google is here uh, because we've created this project fairly recently. It comes uh, out of the box for us like that. But then in here, we are going to add in the dependencies a new class path to the Google services here. Uh, yes, because you can see here they, are, they do not exist. So we'll simply just go ahead and do that. Um, and then I believe this other one will be set up as well. Yep, Google is in the all projects. So everything here seems to be good. But now let's go down here. We see the project app module build.gradle. So if we go ahead and quickly open up our other build.gradle file, which is inside of the app directory, we will see you know, the normal file that you, uh, you know, put your dependencies inside of and, and that people are most familiar with. We're just gonna simply make sure the com.android application should be there, of course. And then otherwise we need this one here, the Google services. So we'll just you know, kind of follow this path here. I'm just gonna do that. Um, Apply plugin is a little bit outdated, it seems. So they haven't updated their docs completely at the moment, but that's just fine. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and do this here. So we will, again, just kind of follow everything here. Uh, sure, we'll put it here. So we'll say Firebase. And we will just go ahead and quickly uh, paste that in. And then in here again, we're going to use the analytics KTX. So really just a long-winded way to say, just copy and paste everything that they have here inside of this little tutorial. And then we obviously are gonna hit sync now. So we can go ahead and do that now that we're done modifying both of our Gradle files here. And once this is up and running, we should actually just be able to run our app. And then the app will basically communicate with Firebase, with Google servers, and things will just magically start working. It's, it's honestly quite amazing. Um, and it is really just a low, low, low lift for us as Android developers to have something like this at our disposal here. So we can simply hit uh, next and then it gives you the you're all set. Make sure to check out documentation and then you can check out some, some sample apps and stuff like that. So we can see here that our uh, app has come up. Hmm, maybe we could give this a little bit of a nickname. We're just gonna give this a nickname of Android here and we're just gonna save that. And then if we just go back here, now we'll see Android. So otherwise we can just go ahead and uh, build our application here, run our app, and it should start communicating. If there are any issues, sometimes we do have to, um, you know, like uninstall the application and reinstall it just to make sure things are kind of up and running. But normally it should just start working right off the bat. But yeah, as we let this build here, I think it's still doing its thing here. Um, we have basically done it. So we've gone ahead and created our uh, Firebase project here. We've added our Android application into it and we've fetched that uh, Google services.json file and added that to our project here. So uh, from this point forward, this application is connected to Firebase. There are certain things that will just start happening out of the box. And in the next episode here, I think we're gonna just pick up with Crashlytics. It is, I mean, honestly, it's just amazing. It really is necessary if you're going to push any kind of code to production uh, just to get some insights into the, you know, crashes that happen and all that stuff. So we will go ahead and enable our Crashlytics here in the next episode. We will even force a crash uh, to happen so that we can go ahead and see, um, you know, the Crashlytics working at its, uh, you know, doing its thing. And so, yeah, you could see here the project just kind of started up again. Everything functions as normal. We can definitely just go ahead and search as we normally did in the beginning of the episode here. And nothing functionally changes to our application other than the simulator running a little bit slower. Uh, but nothing has changed to the actual code to the project or anything along those lines. And in the next episode, the next few episodes, we're going to explore a little bit more about Firebase, some of the other specific things that it has uh, at your disposal that you can make use of. And like I said, we'll kick it off with Crashlytics in the next one. So 
Uh, I hope to see you there. If you made it this far, please do drop a like, drop a comment, let me know how I'm doing. And if you notice you are not subscribed and want to continue seeing this content and being up to date, I would really appreciate a subscription. It'll help grow the channel. We are still pretty small, so it is kind of fun to be a part of the community at this point. I hear everybody's comments and, and I reply to everybody. So with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.